There's a secret health epidemic that nobody is talking about, and it's proven to be more of a risk factor for your heart than practically anything else. This factor is critical for your bone health, essential for your kidney health, and for your nerve functioning and muscle growth, repair, and performance. And if you don't have this right, your risk of heart attack and stroke can skyrocket. Now you're probably expecting me to say something like eating sugar or salt or processed meats or smoking or not exercising. Not today. Today I'm talking about your potassium to sodium ratio. What exactly? Nobody's talking about this and it's so important. It is essential to life itself. But the way our modern diet full of processed and packaged foods has left us, we're consuming little to no potassium and so much more sodium and not a healthy source of sodium either. Hi, I'm Ross Bridgard from liveenergized.com and today we're gonna to be talking all about your potassium to sodium ratio, why it's important and how you can get it right because if you've been suffering from any of those types of symptoms or if you're worried about hypertension or cardiovascular disease, stroke, your bone health or your muscle health, this could be so, so important for you. This subject has been so hidden, nobody's talking about this. And on top of this, we're getting misleading health messages once again from our doctors, from the mainstream health media, the government and the pharmaceutical industry. It's led us to completely the wrong direction. For all of this time, for at least the last five decades, we've been worrying about cutting down on sodium rather than adding in potassium. And the research has proven this over and over again, that total sodium intake is nowhere near as powerful as simply increasing your potassium intake. However, there isn't much money in potassium, just like the fat-free farce of the last 50 years, leading us to consume 300% more sugar each day than is healthy on average. It's literally killing us, but in a different way, the reduced salt, the low salt industry, is booming. And law prevents food and supplement manufacturers from adding potassium into their products, and more on this in a minute. So they're looking for the low salt option instead. Instead of raising our potassium with real food, it's easy for food companies to just reduce the salt, package it up and market it that way. And if the doctors and governments are telling you to do it too, it's money time. And just as with the fat-free industry, the government says that low fat, the foods that can replace that fat with sugar to get flavor into their products, it's so easy and they're making a ton of money and then they're lobbying the government to keep spreading this message for them. And the bottom line is this, a salt restricted diet is not the way to protect your health. The most important factor is potassium intake. And now I know that this might seem confronting to some people. So let's have a look at some of the evidence because we've been told for so many years, low salt, low salt, low salt, keep that salt down. The PURE study, the P-U-R-E, which stands for Prospective Urban Rural Epidemiology Study, was a four-year study involving over 100,000 people from 17 different countries, and it actually found that sodium intake was nowhere near a decent predictor of heart health. In fact, those in the lowest risk group were consuming three to six grams of sodium a day, which is far more than the recommended daily limits. But then they also found that the people in the group consuming less than three grams, those in what's considered the safe range, were actually in the higher risk group. This suggests a very non-linear relationship between your heart health and sodium. Too much could be bad, too little could be bad, and too little can lead to other risks, by the way, which we're gonna get onto later in this video. But from this study, they proposed a far different approach and a new focus. So rather than aggressively reducing sodium in our diet, the study found that we should be focusing on increasing our potassium. And study after study after study has been conducted into sodium and health, and there is literally no compelling evidence that a low sodium diet helps. In fact, most are showing the opposite. In 2004, researchers from the Cochrane Collaboration in Australia conducted a meta-analysis of 11 low salt trials, and they found in normally healthy people, over the long term, really restricting low salt down really, really far, reduced blood pressure from 120 over 80 to just 119 over 79. In other words, it made basically zero difference. And in a 2006 study published in the American Journal of Medicine, they compared the reported daily sodium intake of 78 million Americans and showed that those lower sodium diets actually led to a higher mortality rate among those with cardiovascular disease. So those people that were being told, those ones that were being targeted and being told to really, really restrict their salt, these people were showing a higher increased rate of mortality by having a lower salt diet. 
This is so, so wrong. We've got this all backwards. The bottom line is this, as we've always said on this site, salt is actually critical to your health. Sodium is one of the most alkaline minerals and it's one of the sources that powers your body. And along with potassium, it's a powerful one-two combination that keeps you functioning day in and day out. Molecular pumps pull potassium into your cells and push sodium out to create almost a battery in your body. And this battery is what is driving the, the transmission of signals along your nerves and powers the contraction of your muscles. Potassium and sodium together keep your kidneys functioning properly. They're essential for your energy production and fluid balance. It's so, so important to get this balance right. And researchers are now beginning to show a definitive link between potassium and sodium balance and your bone health too. So you need salt, but it has to be the right kind of salt. And we're not talking about regular table salt right now, which is predominantly sodium chloride. It's refined to within an inch of its life. It's full of man-made chemicals. What you need is natural salt, Himalayan salt, sea salt, natural, unprocessed, unrefined salt, and not to be restricted either. Restricting salt is not helping you. As I mentioned before, too little salt is not proven to be supportive of heart health, but it has been proven to be linked to the risk factor for so many other health conditions and diseases. In a 2016 study published in The Lancet, they found that while those already diagnosed with hypertension, so those that already have a condition should track and measure their sodium intake and not go really high, for everybody else, those without hypertension, a low sodium diet was actually associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular events and death. It's clear that focusing on sodium is making things really, really muddy and unclear. We often talk about how overwhelm and confusion and conflicting advice is the biggest frustration for people who are really determined and wanting to make healthy changes to their diet. And now how about this? People eating loads of salt were in the low risk group and people eating low levels of salt were also in the low risk group. But people with high hypertension and a high salt diet should change it up. But people without hypertension should eat more salt and a low salt diet can actually increase the risk of hypertension. I'm confused just saying it, which of these is true? The bottom line is they all are. Sodium isn't the important factor here. Your potassium intake and its relative ratio to your sodium is the only thing we need to be focused on. And the shocking fact is, estimates predict that 95% of us are eating nowhere near enough potassium on a daily basis and way too much sodium in comparison. How much potassium should we have? Well, the recommended amount sits around an average of about 4,700 micrograms a day, but this really isn't the most important measure. Of course, we need to be getting enough. We need to be getting that baseline, but our ratio of sodium to potassium has to be right. We're all getting way too much sodium in relation to our potassium, and this is causing a huge amount of damage and unbalance in our body. If you're facing any kind of blood pressure, heart, hypertension, cardiovascular issue, or if you're facing issues with your bone health, density, strength, or mus muscular issues, I highly, highly recommend you pay attention to this ratio, your sodium to potassium. And getting enough of that potassium is critical. Keeping that sodium to potassium ratio is really, really critical. According to a Harvard Health School report, I'm quoting here, thousands of years ago when humans roamed the earth gathering and hunting, potassium was abundant while sodium was scarce. The so-called Paleolithic diet delivered about 11,000 milligrams of potassium a day, but well under 700 milligrams of sodium. The scarcity of sodium is reflected in the human body's marvelous ability to hold on to this substance. The body only needs to have 200 milligrams of sodium a day to survive. But the average person eating an average Western diet is having up to 7,500 milligrams a day. It's crazy. And as mentioned, we're getting nowhere near that 4,700 milligrams of potassium. Most people are getting probably even half that amount at best. So we've evolved with a sodium to potassium ratio requirement of around one to six sodium to potassium, but we're actually consuming a ratio that's more like four to one sodium to potassium. It's basically the wrong way around. In the 2011 study, sodium and potassium intake and mortality among US adults, the researchers found after looking at studies involving 12,000 adults that our findings suggest that a higher sodium potassium ratio is significantly associated with an increased risk of CVD and all cause mortality. Not good. We have to address this now. 
And this is how we're going to do it. Step one, ditch the processed foods. Pro processed foods are almost always super high in sodium and really super low in potassium. And they're also a source of hidden sugars and preservatives, acid forming ingredients, chemicals, and really, really low nutrient content. Nothing fresh, let's put it that way. Plus, they're often pasteurized, which basically kills off any remaining nutrients that would have been in there. They're rubbish. These foods are so easily replaced in the dark with just a little pre-prep and a little planning. There's not a fast food oven meal, microwave meal, and don't even get me started on microwaves that can't be replaced with just a little bit of pre-prep and planning. For example, look at this. This is what we often do in our house. Instead of a regular store-bought spaghetti bolognese sauce, which basically contains very little potassium, a ton of sodium, and an unholy amount of sugar. I simply blend together five tomatoes, a garlic clove, half a red onion, half a cucumber, 50 grams or more of spinach, a carrot, and maybe even a bell pepper. And this contains 1600 to 2000 milligrams of potassium per serve just for this sauce. And what a change that is. Plus a ton of antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, anti-inflammatory, alkaline foods, plus it's raw. You can just blend this up and then gently cook it so it goes in without destroying the nutrients of the food. And this is just one quick example. And if you do like we do, instead of serving this on a bed of pasta, we serve it on a bed of steamed veggies like broccoli and cauliflower, zucchini, peas, carrots, green beans. This bed of veggies contains another 1400 milligrams of potassium, meaning you've gotten 3000 milligrams of potassium just from that dinner, instead of a bolognese sauce over pasta and meatballs, which would have contained all of that sugar, no nutrient content, loads of man-made chemicals and preservatives, loads of sodium and no potassium. Step two, as you can imagine, eat tons of fresh veggies and just a little bit of fruit. So the foods that are highest in potassium, one of the most alkaline minerals on earth are of course the high alkaline forming foods. In other words, fresh foods, fresh vegetables and a handful of fruits. Now, you need to be a little bit careful of not consuming too much fruit as the high fructose content can cause really big problems with your liver, your hormones, inflammation, acidity, but that's another video. We'll do another video about fructose. But I do recommend that one to two pieces of in-season fruit a day is absolutely fine. You want to avoid fruit juices because fructose without fiber is just a disaster. And avoid dried fruits because it's really easy to overconsume these and they're just little pocket rockets of con concentrated sugar. But other fruits they're fine in moderation. Now, the foods that are highest in potassium that I recommend are on your screen right now, things like beet greens, Swiss chard, spinach bok choy, beetroot, Brussels sprouts, kale in there, celery, some bell pepper, and then some of the pulses like lima beans and kidney beans and so on. Avocado is really great. Again, loads of green foods as ever. Whenever there's a nutrient and foods are recommended, it's always tons and tons of alkaline green foods. There is a trend there if you noticed it. Again, fruits can support this as well, but generally they're actually lower in potassium than a lot of those foods I've just mentioned. Even the much lauded potassium king, supposedly banana, gram for gram actually contains way less potassium than most of those foods listed above. So keep your fruits to just one to two pieces a day, but go crazy on those green, fat-rich, anti-inflammatory, alkaline foods. Step three is juices and smoothies. Who would have guessed? Yes, juices and smoothies. Again, I never stop recommending having a green juice or a smoothie, preferably every single morning before you leave the house so that you know you're hitting those levels before you've even left the house in the morning. Now below, I've given you links to my recipes for my super potassium juice and smoothie. So there's no excuses about only having a juicer or only having a blender. There's one of each. And these are a fantastic way to get a massive, huge hit of potassium before you've even left the house. The bottom line is that in a juice or a smoothie you can just pack in way more vegetables than you'd normally be able to happily eat in one sitting and certainly before breakfast. It's not something that you'd normally eat a ton of before breakfast but you can do that with a juice or a smoothie and either is fine. The bonus of smoothies being that you can add in some avocado to make it nice and thick and smooth and a great source of healthy fats as well and you get all the fiber. Now the benefits of juice on the other hand is you're removing that fiber so that you can more easily digest the nutrients and you tend to be able to add in more leafy greens with a juice. Do this daily and I promise you, you will really feel the difference. And step four is healthy salts and not to cut back. So swap your salt now. If you are still using regular table salt, 
cut that out immediately. And if you're gonna follow step one and cut out processed foods, I actually recommend you'll need to add in more salt because salt is so critical to the functioning of your body. I highly recommend a natural salt like pink Himalayan salt. And salt is essential to your health in so many different ways. It is really, really so important that please Please, if you take one thing from this video, aside from having a juice every morning, it's not to go super low salt. Here are just a few of the things that salt is so important for in your body. Number one, with salt being a major component of your blood plasma, your lymphatic fluid, your extracellular fluid, and your amniotic fluid, it's so essential that you keep those levels super, super solid so that none of these areas of your body, which are so critical to all the major processes and functions and systems of your body, get out of balance. Number two, salt is really, really important in carrying nutrients into and out of your cells. Number three, it helps regulate your blood pressure. Number four, it increases the glial cells in your brain, which are responsible for creative thinking and long-term planning, that's so cool. Number five, it helps your brain communicate with your muscles so that you can move on demand via that sodium potassium ion exchange we talked about right at the top of this video. You need salt, but you need the right kind because whereas table salt is 97% clodium sauride and then 3% man-made carcinogenic chemicals, Himalayan salt is 84% sodium, and the other 16% are these wonderful, massive amount of organic trace minerals in naturally occurring amounts that are just so, so good for your body. Look, the takeaway message here is this. You need to cut out processed foods and you need to add in those fresh, green, healthy, natural foods, plus that real natural salt. And if you're concerned about your cardiovascular health or your bone health or your muscle health, I recommend you stop now and look specifically into your recent daily diet. Make a retrospective food diary from the past three or four days and look at how much potassium and sodium you've consumed. Use a site like those listed below this video like Nutrient Data or Calorie King and calculate your totals. It will only take 10 minutes and it could be really eye-opening for you. So let's ditch the junk, let's eat some real foods and let's do this. Let's take your energy up to the next level. And if you've enjoyed this video and you want to get more from me like this, I send out a video just like this once or twice a week. Hit the subscribe button below this video right now. Let's do this. Let's get your potassium to sodium levels all sorted and let's take your energy, your health and your vitality to a whole new level. Have a great day guys and I'll see you in the next video.